Hey guys, glad to have you back with me today. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a first look at the new Toolkit RC M6AC charger. Now, if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you may know that I recently reviewed the Toolkit RC Q6 AC charger, which I have right over there on the bench, and it's become a workhorse for me. So when Toolkit RC reached out with the specs on this new charger, I was definitely intrigued, and it has a few tricks up its sleeve that I think some of you guys are gonna find interesting. So. This is that bad boy right here. But before we get into it, I wanna talk about a couple of things. You may have noticed, I hope you noticed, I've posted a couple of new videos lately and I'm gonna to try to get back in the rhythm of posting things on the regular. And I just wanna talk about that for a second and kind of what it involves. And one of the biggest pieces of advice that I give to anybody whenever they ask me about starting a YouTube channel or making content or doing anything like video related or social media related, the one thing I always tell people is just go do it. Like there is nothing more powerful than actually making a video. The only reason that I've gotten as, as good, modestly, whatever, the only reason that I'm able to make the videos that I make today is because of the number of videos that I've made in the past. Your first video is always gonna be crap. And the biggest thing to do is just, just get out there and do it. Uh, it's gonna suck. It's not gonna be great. And that's the point that I wanna make here is that the next few videos that I do may not be the best videos that I've ever done, uh, but I wanna, I wanna work on getting back into a rhythm and finding how I can fit YouTube and FPV into my life. If you don't know, I've recently had another kid, uh, Jakob, he is now seven months old and we're kind of settling into a rhythm with him. And so I don't, I, I have a full house. I got three kids and a wife here and uh, we stay busy, but I wanna figure out how to fit in making YouTube content with all of the other things that I have going on. And so the, the way that I'm gonna do that is by just making the content. And I know that like, I don't have the time to sit here and edit these videos to the nth degree and do like a crazy amount of testing. Um, I, like my recent open IPC video, I spent weeks and weeks, maybe even a month tinkering with that stuff until I was ready to share with you guys what I had. And then I just kind of put it all together in one flight, said what I had to say and got it out into the wild. The video part, I wanna focus on that. Try to make these as much of a one take thing as I can. I always have to correct myself, but if I can talk and get out in a short amount of time uh, so that I don't have to sit here and watch back hours and hours of footage and edit it and chop it up and get it to you guys, then that's gonna help me streamline it, help me get more videos to you. I've got a couple of new products uh, that I wanna be posting videos about even this week. I've got the Avatar repeater that Walksnell was kind enough to send to me. Um, and this Toolkit RC charger. And then I wanna cover some other stuff and kinda spread out a little bit in the tutorials that I do, because I feel like there's some unique things that I could share with you guys that I hope you'll find helpful. So, now as we start to look at this Toolkit RC M6 AC charger, one thing I wanna note is that this charger was sent to me by Toolkit RC for the purposes of this review. Uh, they didn't pay me anything. They don't know what I'm gonna say. In fact, they had to remind me to make the video because uh, I got a lot going on. <laughs> And I'm always late with these reviews. So sorry, manufacturers and people. I hope you still find my videos helpful. All right, let's dive right in. Here we have the new M6 AC from Toolkit RC. As you can see, it is a single channel charger. We got one XT60, one balance plug from two to, well, I guess one to 6S, uh, up to 15 amps. We'll do 300 watts on DC, 100 watts on AC, USB port, signal tester, some other features coming in. It is AC and DC. If we have it on DC, we are good from seven to 28 volts. Uh, AC is gonna be 100 to 240, so it's good worldwide for you travelers out there. Uh, we got four buttons on the front. It's a bit of a different interface from my last Toolkit RC charger, uh, but I've kind of gotten the hang of it pretty quickly. For size comparison, I am going to slide in my trusty and busted uh, Q6 AC charger. So it is significantly smaller, I would say. Um, 
there are a lot of things that the Q6AC is gonna do that this guy is not, but this guy does have some tricks up its sleeve that I want to get into. Uh, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and power it off of the AC, plug it into the wall here. Ta-da. All right. Uh, and you can see it boots up with this interface here. Now I have actually changed it. Uh, the stock interface uh, is gonna be a white background, a lot like my Q6 AC. I went ahead and changed that right off the bat. You can come down here, lots of, uh, uh, oh yeah, personalization. Theme, light, dark. Uh, change your backlight, change your volume. As you can see, I've turned it all the way down because I'm just not a fan of all of the beeps, the boop, beep, bops, security, all your temperature settings, input settings, whether it's uh, AC or DC. I like to limit if I'm on DC to the minimum voltage so that I don't over discharge a battery that I've got plugged into the back here. Uh, Oh, you can turn battery selection on or off. I assume that if it's off, you don't have necessarily like your nickel metal hydrides. I think it's probably gonna lock you into a LiPo at that point. Um, I'm gonna turn it on. I haven't been using that. Continuous work. I think this is the one where it'll just, as you plug a battery in, it'll just charge it on the last setting. So if you're gonna go like battery to battery to battery, this is a really handy feature. Uh, we're gonna end at work complete. Yep. All of that is pretty uh, straightforward. As a charger, let's go ahead and grab a battery and just throw it on here, show you what the interface is gonna look like. Let's see. Uh, so there we go, popped up the voltage, 22.79. Plug in the balance lead. There we go. There we go. Got her in and you can scroll through and see your individual cell voltage. If we were to select a charge, we can do, uh, oh, I love, this is one of the features that I have really fallen in love with on the Q6AC is the battery selection function where you have the ability to um, have it set up. Like I've got my Q6AC set up where I've got a four amp charge setting, uh, 1.3 amp for your typical lipos, a, um, what was the other ones that I've got? Like basically the amperage for if I have a full balance board or a half balance board, I, it's like a quick select menu where I don't have to necessarily scroll from like 15 amps all the way down to 1.3. Uh, it's a really nice feature. So I'm gonna just select this one and you can see that it is set up to charge at two amps and for up to 4.2 volts per cell. Uh, cell count is on auto. If I do go to start, it's gonna question me, hey, is this 25.2 volts? Is this really a 6S battery? Hit okay, and we're now charging. One thing that I like to look at with these chargers is how fast they populate the internal resistance, and this guy has popped up really quickly. I do appreciate that. Nice little status page there. Uh, and if we were to press the button, just like on the Q6AC, we have the option to change the current or to stop it. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it for now. Uh, if you were to select a new uh, setting, you could create a new current setting, so on and so forth. I'm gonna, oh, now I've doubled it. Yeah, I can change that later. I'm not too worried about it. That is how it functions as a standard charger, which it does a great job at that, uh, 15 amps. Um, max, well, 100 watts, so let's do the math. Uh, 100 watts on a 6S battery, basically 25 volts, so you're gonna be able to hit it with four amps. That's not a ton when we're talking about doing a balance board, like a parallel charging. If I've got six batteries on the parallel, that's 1.3 times six, so like six, uh, 7.8 amps. So we would really be charging it at like half C for a full uh, six, port um, parallel board. Uh, 
I, you know, I would like to see more, but I'm not going to uh, poo-poo it too much. I really look at this charger as more of a charger for an entry-level person. Maybe you got a few packs, you're not gonna be cranking through a ton of packs. For me, my personal use, I want the big Q6AC with four channels. I think that this has a place and even has a place in my arsenal because of what comes up next. If we press this button here, no, nope, not that button, not that button. I think it's long press this one. Yes, long press of that button. And now we have a lot of other interesting features. Oh snap, is I thought that this was gonna be like a multimeter replacement. This is actually, bam, and there's your internal resistance. Wow, okay, I actually really like this feature. Of my, the Q6AC has all but replaced my old eye charger, my, what is that thing even called? I, I don't even see it underneath the table here. It used to sit underneath this table. Um, the, uh, oh man. That's gonna bug me. Anyways, my old eye charger, one of the features that I really liked about it was the ability to get instantaneous um, internal resistance on my batteries without even having to start a charge. You just press the button, press and hold the button and it pops this up. Uh, this is actually a really useful feature. When I go through my batteries, every couple weeks, every month or so, I will put every battery on the charger, hit and check the internal resistance and make a note. And if any of them have an internal resistance that is too high, um, I'll actually retire those batteries. It's my check on whether or not the battery is still usable. For reference, typically speaking on these um, chargers, I would expect, this is a brand new pack by the way, I would expect internal resistance per cell about what we're seeing now between five and seven uh, milli ohms of internal resistance per cell. If the, uh, at, over the lifespan of the battery, you're gonna see this number creep up. If any one of those is way out of whack, like if I had a bunch of single digits and then one that was like 30, that one cell is definitely bad and that battery needs to be retired. As they get older, like 15 is like midlife. Once they're above about 25 milliohms of internal resistance is when I will typically go ahead and retire them. Um, your mileage may vary. You may need to eke out a little bit more life per battery than I do, but that's kind of where I am at. Wow, I'm actually really impressed with that. I read the resistance test and I just assumed because of the other features of this that it was like a multimeter type resistance test. Okay, well that's cool. More checks that we have here. Let's back out of that. I'll hold down this menu. We have the ability to measure your signal. So you can actually use this as a tester to see that your PWMs, your S bus signals, or your PPMs, God, who uses that anymore, uh, are all in line and you're getting the values that you expect to get. The uh, little signal tester, there's a port right here. I did not know how to remove that port. I figured out that if I just take a little machine screw, wait, it wasn't this one that I used before, where is it? Uh, this guy. I just take a little machine screw, twist it in right like so. I can pull it out and now you have access to your signal tester um, connections, et cetera. So you can test uh, signals if you were using an S bus and you wanna make sure that you got a good output. I've also got that on like a battery checker. I've never actually used that um, feature. However, a signal output, if you are building uh, aircraft, um, like fixed wing aircraft, and you need to make sure that your servo is centered, for instance, bam, I can do 1500 uh, uh, millisecond, 1500, is that millisecond? Yeah, I can do 1500, uh, I can set it to 1500, which is center, and get the servo to center itself so that I can attach the control horn. This is a really useful uh, feature we can even go through here and change all the modes. So you can make an auto and you can just see a sweeping, uh, different speeds for the auto, set it manually to whatever value it is that you need, change the cycle. So if you have like some high end servos, let's say, let's see how high it'll go. If you've got some 500 Hertz servos and you really need to uh, be able to test that out, 
your typical servo, especially like the lower end hobby stuff, is going to net you about a 20 millisecond or 50 hertz. Um, bam. Nice. Okay. I dig that. The thing that I was the most excited about, oh wait, we got an ESC tester also. So if with the ESC tester, it's setting, you can also set your, um, your setting for the uh, PWM value that's coming out. It will power the, uh, this, now we can't change the voltage. That's a little odd. Um, you can power the ESC and make sure that you get the startup tones. If you wanted to calibrate it like a, a old school ESC, you could, I wonder if you can make it jump from 2000 to 1000. No, that's not, ah, uh, why would you calibrate it to the, to the charger anyways? That seems like a silly idea. Uh, I was just trying to think of ways that I could use this. Honestly, this is another one of those things that I'm probably not ever going to use. The power though. And this one is the one that actually got me the most excited because this is one of the things that I actually always have on my workbench. This was not provided to me by Toolkit RC. In fact, I had to purchase this guy. It is the Toolkit RC, what is the thing even called? The P200. This is a desktop power supply. Um, it runs off of AC or DC. It's gonna tilt up too high and not be able to focus. What this does is it allows you to supply anything from like 0.1 to 30 volts at up to 10 amps, which doesn't sound like that great of a useful thing when I've, you know, I never really felt like I needed a power supply until I had one. And I use that thing all the freaking time. If you want to bind your receiver and not have to find a battery, Bam, do it. If you want to power your uh, VTX for a firmware update and you don't know how long it's gonna take, do it. If you just built a fresh drone and you want to apply 6S power, but actually, and you want to apply 6S power, but you want to limit it to, you know, one amp so that if you do have a short, it's not going to fry anything. Well, we can do that too. For instance, let's just, actually, I don't know if this uh, drone that I've got to plug in is 6S friendly. Let's just give it uh, 4S. So 16.8 volts, we'll limit it to two amps. That should be good. If we had any type of a short, then it would, um, actually shut off power. I will do this bad boy. I'm gonna hit enter and you can see that it is ramping up. It's going to supply 16.8 volts. It settles in right there. We got this drone. This is the Colas uh, seven inch folding drone from, who is that? Axis Flying. As I plug this in, you are going to see the current draw on it bump up. So, ta-da, and the drone is powered. We got lots of beeping because there's no GPS and the baby's asleep, so I gotta get that guy unplugged. But as you can see, it actually has a great uh, power supply. I can't speak highly enough. I have used the function of a power supply so many times. If I'm like, uh, I've even like made adapters to run single board computers off of them. Um, the the Toolkit RC one actually has a USB-C that does uh, the smart PD power delivery stuff. Um, I just wanna give you guys a little show here. This is a new find of mine. This is my new favorite multimeter. Not really for using at the house. That's an interesting sound that it's making. Oh, that's the fan. Um, but I've started carrying this multimeter in my bag because it is so stinking small. Look at that guy. Ta-da! And then it holds your little leads in here. Just pull those bad boys out and we can test the actual voltage on it. I hope you guys can read the screen. If not, you're just gonna have to take my word for it. The multimeter is reading that at 16.8284, 16.76. See, so yeah, it's bumping up and down, which is what the display on the Q6AC is also showing. Um, so I feel like that is a accurate reading. Uh, I'll make a link in the, uh, 
put a link in the description as well for this little multimeter. I saw it on one of the ham radio channels I follow. Um, the temporary offline uh, ham, awesome YouTuber, and uh, totally got me turned on to this guy. Perfect for just sliding in your backpack. But anyways, uh, back to the charger at hand. Yeah, I love the, uh, the power supply functionality of this. And when Toolkit RC asked me if I wanted to review it, the whole reason I said yes was because of that power supply option. I plan to, um, like right now, my workbench over here has the uh, power supply on it, but I feel like I want a power supply in more places. A lot of times I do work at my desk. And so I'm thinking about moving one or the other over to the desk where I'll have the ability to charge batteries and also run a power supply when needed. So I can't say, speak highly enough of that. The fact that you're getting a power supply and a uh, one port charger is just awesome. Um, the other thing that I need to mention that Toolkit RC also included, I don't know if they're throwing this in with every charger. Uh, I hope that they are, so maybe they can comment and uh, let everybody know down below. But this is a cigarette lighter adapter that will let you run this charger off of your car. And uh, it's just a cigarette lighter to XT60, plug that into the back, and you would be able to charge your packs all day. Don't be like me and run your car battery completely dead doing so, but uh, yeah, you, you can totally run this. So this could be a field charger slash field power supply. If you're needing to do repairs or anything, you wanted to uh, power your TS100 or Pine Sill or whatever, uh, um, soldering iron it is that you have in the field. You could also do that off of this guy. Like it's just a really versatile, small package. And I do, I don't know that I would have bought this, but I'm very glad that I have it. I'm going to be sticking with the Q6AC for the primarily for all of my charging needs, but I think this guy has earned a spot on my desk because of the power supply functionality and uh, just having an extra charger laying around and possibly a car charger. Usually I got too many packs. I don't usually do the on the road charging anymore. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I do appreciate having you all here. I'm gonna do a proper outro though. Let's cut to that. And there you have it. That is the new Toolkit RC M6 AC charger, smart thing, signal generator, analyzer, power supply. Like I said, it does a lot of different things. Now, it might not be the best tool that I have for each and every one of these jobs, but the fact that you're getting all of those in one small compact charger that is only as of this, me making this video, I think it's on sale right now, $53.99 in the US. I think it's normally gonna be like 59. Uh, they're like 10% off right now. Maybe because it's new, maybe because it's the holidays. I don't know, but get it while it's cheap if this is something that's right for you. And you know, this is the kind of charger that I would have loved to have had when I was just starting out. I don't think that you can get as feature packed of a charger as this is that I'm aware of um, in any other form factor. Now, sure, if you are a power user like me, a four channel charger has lots of upsides. The Q6AC is awesome. I still use it to charge my phone back there on the desk. It's currently charging my uh, Quest 3, like the PD65 that comes off of that thing is awesome. But the fact that this charger is so small, can be used in the field, has multiple functions, it, I guarantee when you're starting out, you don't have a power supply, you don't have an ESC tester, you don't have a signal checker, you don't have a way to like drive PWM signals in order to center your servos without hooking it into a receiver or doing something kind of janky. Having all of these things just sitting on your bench is a great asset. And I think that it's a great value for anybody that's new to the hobby. And even if you've been around in the hobby a while, maybe you've got a secondary work area that you'd like to have all these tools, but don't want to have to buy all of the things because that's honestly my use case. I want to be able to work, say, in the garage or on the road, and I can take this one charger into that space and have all of those tools on the desk immediately. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, hit that like, hit the subscribe, let me know in the comments. What charger are you guys using? And another thing that I want to do is because I got a bunch of footage from Australia that didn't quite make the edit, I ended up making it like a one location edit 
didn't really have what I felt was a strong vlog. I'm just gonna be leaking out the footage every now and then. So I'm gonna hit you with a little bit of flight footage in the outro from the Australia trip, just for sticking around this long. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs>